What's up everybody? This week we discuss anime reactions, short films, and debate whether Snickers is the greatest candy bar ever made. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Straight Shot Studios podcast. This is Dale. I'm here with Grace as usual. And we're going to get going talking about all things creative and business. Grace, where do you want to start this week? Well, I want to say this is there's a coming soon of next week we start with our marketing, our growth marketer from Market Hire. So that'll, I hope that'll be news. But right now, this is our last week of, I feel like this was our last chill week. But we started putting out content for reactions, anime reactions, because I've been doing sub versus dub. And this is the first week of me reacting to Death Note. We haven't put out the long form yet, but we already had someone watch our short on Instagram say oh i went to your youtube to look for the long form which we didn't have up yet so we lost one person but i think yeah i don't know do you want to talk about that like how how has it been for you i feel like i keep talking about the uh, the, the anime reactions i'm a fan <laughs> i love anime i love anime i don't understand the psychology of why reactions are so addicting mm. but i i admit that they are so my favorite reactions are actually people that react to music when it's like, you know, like never heard Linkin Park or, you know, stuff I grew up with. So like Linkin Park, every time they do Chop Suey, any of those reactions, I'll go because those songs are crazy. Or like if you've never heard Korn before, for example, and he does a lot of like weird, just like mouth stuff. To me, it's more like seeing people react to things from another era, things that I grew up with that I know mm. aren't popular. Like there's there's no reason they would have hurt like Linkin Park probably, but some of the other stuff I don't know, right? Kind of, I don't know, it gets me every time. And so thinking about what to start doing for our YouTube channel, we are fans of comics and webtoons and anime and stuff like that. And it kind of just with, with your background and your interests, it seemed to be like a good fit um and so now now we're trying to figure out how do we you know what's sort of the right way to shoot it and i think i hope that when people see our videos they can see that you know we're putting in a lot of effort you know because mm -hmm. obviously i like went and started looking at other people's reactions and i think a lot of it for people is like a hobby you know i hope that they can see our thumbnails and see our videos and feel like oh these guys are like really trying to make it an engaging experience and not just like play the episode and just like try to make it interesting if that makes any sense while still keeping mm -hmm. it super authentic so very different kind of thing than um we normally do uh but mm -hmm. i'm enjoying it cool i mean my dad texted me yesterday saying 11k views because you complained that your parents didn't buy you a digital dictionary and there's a video that has 11k views of me talking about you know there's a big death i mean i'm watching death note and i should be paying attention to the death note that's being brought up and yet i'm so focused on this uh device that one of the characters is holding in the background and it's totally a ds but my brain in the moment thought it was a digital dictionary that japanese people have and then i went off about that and we made it a little short about that and that got 11k views which is so funny it's so random um and then my dad texted me that my dad isn't letting me forget about that and then also about my dry lips from this one shoot I did for Cowboy Bebop. Um, my lips are dry. <laughs> now he texts me every week. He's like, stay hydrated. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So that's been fun. That's been interesting for my parents to be seeing my content. I feel a little weird about that. Like, I don't... I feel I'm totally authentic. I don't know. I think I'm authentic in front of my parents, but not authentic in the way that I... Oh, come on. It, I know what you're saying, world. but, like, there's definitely yeah. a version of you. You're not going to be a weirdo exactly. in front of your parents. Like, you know, like... Exactly. Yeah. Um... There's a layer of filter, I think. Of course. That's just, yeah. So it's weird <laughs> for me. You're playing uh, like the roles. Like, I'm your daughter. Yeah, dude. No one knows yeah, like, what you're yeah. doing at also, 11 also, at night on a Friday. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, that's not the version <laughs> of you that you're showing your, your parents. You know what I mean? Parents. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, the YouTube version of myself also is not, it is authentic, but it's not exactly. Right. Uh, I mean, I was telling my dad about it and. You know, he's like, are you enjoying producing it? And I said, well, I'm not producing it. I'm just in it. But he meant like, are you enjoying being in it and making it? Yeah. And I said, yes, it's interesting, though. It is like acting where I am taking direction and slowly trying to incorporate that. And it, it gets heady. I think 
last week actually I was shooting the Demon Slayer movie and I think I was so in my head and be- because of all the notes and or was it was it during that or maybe during the second episode of um, Death Note and Spy Family? There are multiple moments where I trying to make a comment and I just had to stop and be like, I'm blanking. Um, and then and then doing the outro, I got so heady about that, too. And then I couldn't. I did it a million times. Poor Sebastian, our editor, who had to see it. I apologize. I was like, I'm sorry, Sebastian. I'm trying. Um, so, yeah, I did hit that point where I got really heady about it. Um, so it's a learning curve. <laughs> I'm saying this already. I've only done it a few times. I know what you're saying because right now I'm doing our thumbnails. And it's like every time I do a thumbnail and a title, there's something I feel like I can improve. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, I get I can be a perfectionist and I can get stuck on the littlest things um, about your reaction or your face or how white your teeth are or how red your lips are. Or, you know, are there a few strays oh of ha- hair on, over your face? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I was looking at like 10 different iterations of similar expressions and then trying to pair that up with the right part of the show that I thought would fit. But you have to draw a line somewhere, you know, um, we're just getting started. I do think the effort shows i hope right like and that more than anything it'll show like over time we can put out a hundred videos our body of work sort of just raises the bar yeah i hope so because we are trying and it is fun but like but we're also not coming from a hobbyist standpoint we're coming from a professional standpoint so i think there's just a different flavor to it because we're all filmmakers previously um, technically, I consider this a version of filmmaking, but you know what I mean, like from mm-hmm. just a different world. Want to make sure that we're doing YouTube justice, that we're doing it right. Authenticity, as my team has heard me scream at them a thousand, thousand times in the last two weeks, like got to be real. And so it's been uh, definitely exciting to try to figure that out because at the same, there is no version. Your internet self is never right. Um, yeah. Your real self is something we were talking about. This and then when too. it gets edited too, it changes. Oh, yeah. With that, it's very interesting to see (laughs) myself edited. Yeah. (laughs) But I think that that's going to be the thing. I'm glad you have a performance background so you don't end up catering. You know, a lot of people I think would see a comment, oh, you're so loud. And then like they might freak, oh, I can't be loud next time I got to, you know, or oh, you know, like, you know, you know how people can be, uh, especially with appearances and stuff. So. I definitely think that it's good that you kind of under, you know, when we talk about it, you know how to separate these things. I hope we'll find out. <laughs> I keep telling it. We keep talking about like, hey, man, if this thing works, when we go to Comic-Con in October and somebody wants a photo with you from our tiny little fan group that we build up. A photo with me? Yeah. I don't know how I'd feel about that. <laughs> I feel weird about it. Obviously, like, we hope it goes there. That's the truth, right? We're doing this because we want to connect with people. We want them to have po- positive experiences and the reaction thing is an intimate one, an intimate relationship with the person. It is if pretty. You, if, you know, that you watch them react. Also, to just because it's the virtue of the watching my reaction to basically the whole video in the long form and just watching myself just exist and, you know, scratch my face or move around or a- a- anything, every little thing seeing that is pretty weird. It's like a documentary watching yeah. an animal in a cage. So... I would That's not pretty use weird. That reference, no, it's like watching <laughs> a person live their life. Jeez, <laughs> I guess you, you were running on watching an animal at, at a zoo. That's what it feels like oh, when I'm watching so myself. Like, no, oh, this when creature. I watch it, when I watch That's it, it feels. feels like very much like I want to get to know that person. It's like it's it's very much like yeah. I think like I would say, it feels like more of an intimate, like a friendship, giving you that feeling of being in the room with a person watching something for the first time. That, you know, and, and if it's a show like a death note that's like near and dear to my heart, it in this case, it is watching a good friend watch it for the first time. But I can see why it works because you're just like, yes, that experience mm-hmm. I'm never going to get back. And I like Grace and I can't wait to see what happens when she gets to this part, you know, with her personality. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. funny. We were working on the title and the thumbnail going through a bunch of options. The one we landed on was help exclamation point. I think I like him. Death note episode one. 
reaction. Your face is like, oh no. And his face is like, yes, I just murdered, you know? So it's, it could be fun. You're not really going to like watch Death Note. You're going for that experience of like, oh my God, I kind of low key wanted him to win too and he's the bad guy, right? So I think it's really interesting. We'll see how it goes. I mean, we're gonna be putting this out and we're gonna commit to it for a while, you know, and we assume there's not gonna be much if any traction, but we've already seen some with our other videos stuff and I never thought would happen. You know, we got 200 views on our video we put out last week. We're only at two months in, I think. Like, it's really the third long form video that we like put out with your face in it. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I'm just grateful for every view. You know what I mean? We're just trying really yeah. hard to focus on a couple of key points to have people coming back and make it a more enjoyable experience for them. And I, and I mean, I started commenting on all of the pages and finding how responsive people are to that. It was interesting how people will respond back after my response. Like, I don't know if I would, someone responded to me, if I would continue like that, but pretty cool. <laughs> and having a conversation, even though some of them are Sketch. weird. <laughs> yeah. It is, you know, it is the internet and it is the anime <laughs> internet. You know, I couldn't imagine friends I commenting, family commenting, weird people commenting. I mean, some of my friends are, uh, yeah, I, I like to, I'm showing it to some of my friends. It's a little weird when they first go to the page because it's like a bunch of thumbnails of my face. It's a little intense on the feed. <laughs> I'm like, once you're subscribed, it's fine. But when you first go to that page, it's a little weird. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, this week, I feel like the big learnings I had personally were about film in the film world. Oh, like please, I just, I, I was just... Okay, I mean, I was on set this weekend for this movie that I've been producing. Um, and then, yeah, we shot. And then today I went to their class, because it's an NYU class, for seeing the dailies. I mean, she showed the dailies to the class. And wow, did I learn a lot about the just the world that film people are in. It's so different. And I, I felt so much anxiety going into that class. And I felt the seriousness. I mean, because coming in as an actor, an actor, I feel like it's there's a lot of things to consider, but it is at the end of the day, you're only taking care of yourself. You're not really focusing on anything right. else. But when I go to this film class and I see everyone giving notes on a script and on dailies, and there's just so many different dailies, angles. Though. More a comment. I mean, they on were dailies. giving their compliments, comments on the dailies. Yeah, Com not not comments. notes. Um, uh -huh. Comments on the daily. Um, and there's so many different angles to talk about it. Um, you know, lighting, PD, uh, story, actors. That was very interesting, and I felt the stress, and I was like, I don't know how people do it. Mad respect. <laughs> I would feel so stressed. I mean, you know, you know, my, my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I actually had dinner with some friends, um, also from the film world, and they were talking about raising money to do their short, and they were asking my opinion, and I was like, my opinion is, I think you could get a, probably a lot more with that money if you considered and opened up to other mediums. I showed, talked about what we're doing here, how we're going into literature and comics and other areas to s test ideas, to build an audience. And their minds were definitely, they were super interested in what we had to say, which is great because usually I'm not met with, you know, uh, open arms. People seem to be very protective of old ways of doing things. Not surprising, but, um, but yeah, I thought that was really good just to continue to like reinforce how many different ways there are to you know, be able to create and like, and I got yeah. so, I got so used to this bubble that we're in at this company and the way that everyone works because of the culture and it's so fast paced that everyone's on the same page and communicate fairly similarly. Of course there are differences, but you know, basically on the same page and then going to a set where that's not the case, I guess, <laughs> where everyone has very different communication styles. And so that, that was, I guess a jarring experience because it's all it's still fast paced but it's be conscious of how I talk to different people yeah. and how the best way to get the best work out of everyone I guess mm -hmm. um so that was interesting I mean not not to say that I had that much to do because I was just script soup uh so but but still I guess I, I touched we points you know I touched with the DP I mean also that too I was with the DP and then the PD and the director sometimes the actors but anyway um, and then also then watching the dailies today, I got so nitpicky about 
the performances. Oh, right. Like I saw little things and I was like, oh, I would cut that or I would like not, you know, and I and it's funny. It's not. I found a lot of things to complain about in the very beginning and the very end of the takes in performance. I was like, I feel like during it, it's pretty fine but coming in i was like where are they coming like they're coming from the wrong place and they're going to the wrong place i found a lot of that i don't know oh it was a specific note i had and you get uh working here on the webtoon got me so used to being able to just leave a note on frame and be like change that mm -hmm. but you can't <laughs> so that was interesting yeah uh you're stuck with it i guess <laughs> well so you see what the editor the editor that's where the editor comes yeah in. of course the editor can do magic there so but yeah i got so into the acting it was very fun um i didn't say anything yeah i mean there's plenty of work to, we'll do, see to be happens. done i will say yeah. like working on the webtoon you know this week we started working on the second episode and the first episode's fully cut like done done it's just it's done done so that was really exciting um uh, we have a lot of practices we like read it the way that they're gonna read it we ask a lot of questions about the experience of reading it. And um, right now we're just focused on getting the first three done so that I can send those out for like a real world, not even feedback, just, just feedback might be the best word. Just not criticism, right? It's just like, yo, read it. And th th what's the story? Who, who do you think the story's for? And trying to make sure that uh, the game for us is, you know, we're just really, it's a game of prediction. We're telling a story, hoping that it will take somebody through a certain experience and we're just guessing that it's gonna do that, right? That if we do this, we'll get Y result. And obviously it's like flexible. Everybody has a different opinion, but we're looking for the bulk of it. At least we want the story to be clear. You know what I mean? So that's what's gonna be interesting is getting that tested soon for the first time. So the first people, these friends that I went to dinner with, they were the first people to see any panels. Not even mm -hmm. my family has really seen any panels. So oh wow, it's gonna be fun to actually have people read a story that is mm -hmm. just like uniquely this one's personal but like uniquely ours as a company for the first time and i think that's really cool man i'm excited to start doing that obviously i'm excited for just regular people to we're not making it for my family we're not making it for my film friends we're making it for for teens and young adults it's a coming of age story so we really hope that we can grab people that's all i can ask for I'm excited to see the second page, uh, second episode, um, because the first episode we worked on so heavily, and when you're so in it, it's not the same. It's not as good as the second episode. Yeah, like, it's not, it's just, it's a pilot, right? Basically, you know, if anyone understands, like, TV, yeah. it's like, the pilot's never, except for maybe Lost, Lost had an incredible pilot, that's what it was famous for, but it starts with a plane mm. crash, so, you know? Um the pilot's never really amazing. It's just it needs to because it needs to set up the world and stuff and tell you what's hap what the story is really about. So, you know, and you have to get a sense of who the characters are. So as far as like plot, there is no it's not a lot of plot, you know, it's kind of boring. So it's funny because we spent all this time trying to nail down the first episode, which I think was totally worth it, but all of a sudden I'm like reading through the second episode, I'm like, oh, I forgot. This is kind of I forgot we did yeah. this whole part and and this whole thing here with this new character being introduced or I forgot we went for this style. I saw a panel today that I completely I'll just say like I I completely forgot that we like we're going to have this girl's mom in leather all, without saying much. Oh and god, yeah. Because I've seen <laughs> because I just did the poster and did like oh. her normal clothing and her normal character work. I was like I was like that's amazing. I never, I forgot, and it looks great, um, and very, and it, it sets you in the, it, you're like, I just thinking about when you actually meet the character, um, I was like, dude, this is pretty fun, so, you know, it's exciting to start to see things come to life in that manner, and just like with the YouTube side of it, we're really just trying to figure out what's a sustainable model, how often are we shooting, how much are we editing, you know, mm -hmm. um, because right now, we really are just like a scrappy group of of friends you know just like making content on the internet we hope we get to keep doing that so we'll see how it goes yeah so hopefully you guys will tune in and take a look take a read and let us know how you guys think All right i think well i think I that think, covers yeah. it for this week that was the week yeah um 
coming into the next few weeks, we have a lot of stuff coming up. We've got our Death Note reactions. We've got our Spy Family reactions coming in. We have Demon Slayer reactions coming in. Those are the first three shows we're going to um, sort of test. And, of course, uh, that's going to hopefully be weekly. We're going to try to post three times a week if we can. Uh, we're still in the youth, you know, we're going to be posting shorts every day across all the platforms. So stay engaged with us there. Um, also, we are going to be then working on our next sub versus dub video. Those take a lot longer to put together and to make. So um, if there's anything you guys are interested in hearing there, let us know. Um, I don't know if it's a pro tip, though. Okay. I mean, my friend who is studying to become a doctor to try to go to med school, it told me about antioxidants, how she said oxygen is killing us. I didn't know that. I didn't. Um, did you know that? It's, it's more like when you say it, it makes sense, right? Because that's why you don't want to leave things out in open air. That's how food gets oh. old, right? At the cave. Oh, interesting. I guess so. I mean, because I don't know, because oxygen gives us life, of course. But there's a part of, okay, if I butcher this, I'm sorry. But basically antioxidants are good because it's like anti the oxygen, oxygen that's killing you. But the oxygen is like, what is it? She said there's the ATP cycle, which is like the cycle of cells making energy or something. And at the very end of that cycle, oxygen comes in and like deteriorates you just a little bit. And then that happens since the moment you're born and you're slowly just like... Um, and then uh, antioxidants come in and cancel that for a little bit, I guess. So that's what keep. Well, that's why they say it's so good for longevity, I guess. Very so that was an interesting thing. Yeah, I did not say it as eloquently as my doctor friend. <laughs> but, like, yeah, point taken. Eat, ex eat, eat your antioxidants. Is that the take your pills and have some fruit fruit right have some antioxidants and veggies, man. yeah eat have your some fruit and veggies greens fam. yeah there's a lot of conversation life. about longevity yeah. going on now and i saw a poll go up do you know what is the number one thing you can do to increase your longevity sleep oh that's no. really a good one that is not was not on the poll can you give me options in the night shoes? I don't remember, man. You know, like oh, diet, okay. exercise. I think it was like caloric restriction. Oh, um, oh, oh, like that broad. Um, you no. can't control genetics. Something you can control. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Oh, something like, you can control. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Tell you, me. You, I'm you were just not getting thinking. And most people it's not would say, diet. Most people diet? would say something like diet or exercise, right? Okay. It is caloric restriction, actually. Leads to a longer life. Fasting is the most indicative. Yes, yeah, the most correlative with longevity. Like it's the number one. How thing long you can of do. fasting? Um, I sixteen. Fasting eight fast for like normally, but yeah, some people do it for. They do it every day. Some people like me. Um, some people do it like once a month. They'll do a twenty-four hour. Some people do a seventy-two hour. Some people do have done a week, which I would never do. It sounds crazy, but basically, wow. restricting your calories is the number one thing you can do to increase your lifespan. Isn't that interesting? I, I believe, uh, I feel like I'm Sounds so butchering it. I hate yeah. doing science -y stuff. But I did see that poll. Right, because it's know very the nuanced. Because I've seen a lot of people yep. say it and talk about it. So eat less. Questions, Grace. Let's go. Uh, my question for you. Well, did you get to see any other films in the class? No. Okay, my question for you is, what is script. your number one okay. pet peeve when reading scripts? Interesting. That could go many ways. So broad of a question. Honestly, I think when the descriptions are too descriptive mm. in a way that you can't even show that visually. And then it frustrates me because I'm like, okay, I'm invested reading it like literature, but then it's I don't just disappointing. know how that's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, how am I going to see that? So I think that I'll say. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. I like this that. is for film scripts specifically. Yeah. Well, the same thing with what's like, yeah. I guess with webtoons know, and stuff plays are a little different it's yeah and with webtoons you can kind of draw <clears throat> you, you know putting in detail can be useful because they can actually oh. draw it but 
Um, but yeah. yeah, in our scripts, we're really, really lean. We just let the artist, we have conversations about locations and places and what the color should be more than we do writing it into the script. But that's just because we're working with the same artist. So we're trying to just, I feel like if I'm too descriptive with the artist, then he'll rely on that, you know? And at the end of the day, if I could write the script in half the time because we know the world, both of us, it's just mm-hmm. going to be faster. Mm-hmm. Definitely more work up front, though. What's the best and worst candy you could get uh, or thing you can get on Halloween? <laughs> the best that... slash the worst. Yeah. I actually only like a few kinds of candy, so I think that's kind of easy for me. Okay. I do not like the kind of candy that's just sweet, if that makes sense. So, like, I'm not a big Swedish fish fan. Like nerds? I love nerds. Oh, you like nerds? That's tart. Okay. Sour. That's pretty sweet. Oh, that. Oh, my mouth is doing the sour thing. Do you know what I mean? So, like, sweetest fish is the best example. It's sweetest just sweet. Sweetest fish, really? It's just sweet. I would take a Sour Patch Kids okay. over sweetest fish any day. Okay. Another one, Twizzlers. Ugh. Oh, I hate Twizzlers. Why? How is that a candy? It just doesn't taste. It's just like, you know? No, there's it's no like a candle. Flavor. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, like those kind of candies are ones that I'm like, bro, why? So anything that's like that, I'm not a fan of. So you so you like chocolates more, it sounds like. Can too, if no? it's just sweet, I can do chocolate. So I like sour stuff, Jolly Rancher, etc. And I love my favorite candy bar is Snickers. So that would be if I literally just people just gave me a bunch of Snickers on Halloween. It's pretty pretty standard, so that's good. You're not no, on no, the, no, no. See, the thing is, outer edges of liking things. If you get a variety pack, yeah. But like you can get hit with the Musketeers or with the Milky Ways. Oh, I love the Musketeers. See, and the thing is, people, there are people that are Milky Way people. I'm yeah, not that kind of I person. Am. Exactly. You, you don't, we're not, you know, I just, you just, I just lost some respect for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's like that's what it happened. So if you hit the Milky Way house and they just gave you a bunch of Milky Way, it's so depressing. I'll say the packaging. Versus. I don't. I never consciously thought about this, but I just pictured opening a Snickers versus a Milky Way. Like the the wrap for the Snickers is more satisfying to open. This is so specific. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Milky Way is like a glossy thing, and the Snickers is a smooth peel. Dude. You just okay. I'm gonna have to check that out. I just time. lost audience. Yeah, we if just there's lost any, <laughs> we lost the. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I would say that um, least favorite would be Twizzlers or Sweetest Fish. That that's like a common one, and like mm, candy Twizzlers. corn and shit. Oh, I'm not into that. God. And then the, the oh, good candy stuff. Oh, corn. No. The good stuff would be like Snickers. Then other you chocolate know, like, and stuff. Reese's. Reese's. Um. You don't like. Twix. It's like. Yeah, it hurts me that you... Or what about Take 5? Take 5 is like Snickers on crack. Too much, though. Yeah, but yeah. Snickers okay. is just a perfect ratio. It's got the perfect ratio of everything, man. I'll throw you okay. another one, bro. Almond Joy. Almond Joy. I hate those. You like those? <sighs> Only later in life, you know. I no, think I it is an adult grand, thing. Yeah, I don't think kids was like, like a big it. Almond Joy person. I was like, ew, no. And then, I don't know. Overnight, I was like, dude coconut and chocolate and an almond is the greatest combination ever made so good and do you like when chocolate. when it was like the the rectangular or the square you know like they yes. give you the bigger one or the small one i like both if i <laughs> have the bigger one i bite it in two anyways i like little okay. bite-sized things yeah cool. I, don't, I don't really t- yeah i'll take them both i, f- I have a I should say this on one of the React things because it's a Japanese-related thing, but when I went to Japan to go to school there, I brought American sweets to show them, and Twizzlers and Swedish Fish were two of them, and they hated them. They were like, this is plastic. This tastes like nothing. This is disgusting. All the Japanese kids. (laughs) I was like, I agree. (laughs) I just want to show you how bad it is. Oh, what? There's one that we're forgetting that's chocolate but chewy. What is that one called? Tootsie Roll, bro. Uh -uh. Oh, Tootsie Rolls. Not them. I don't like, I liked them just because my dad liked them and I wanted to be like my dad, but I don't think I really like them. Yeah. yeah. And they have like vanilla and lemon and stuff. Yeah. It's so weird. Nah, man. Yeah. Or like regular jelly beans too. Nah, but they gotta, they gotta have some oh. flavor, you know? 
So I think you get it, man. Don't like jelly beans. But yeah, yeah. I haven't had much candy recently, of course. Now it's just like dark, I have dark the Snickers chocolate. in the freezer. Oh, really? Time to celebrate. Let's go. Snickers. All right. Ice well, on cream. that note, I've never had go, that. But we're anyway. gonna go eat okay. some <laughs> Snickers ice cream. Uh, we'll catch up with everybody next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you made it this far, thank you, thank you. We're so grateful. We'll catch up with you guys on the next one. As always, work hard, be nice, and keep changing. This is Dale and Grace signing off.